Hello everyone, greetings from First Baptist Mantino. We are really glad to connect with you. Can you believe Easter is just, well, it's next month actually now, but before we get there, we're going to do a series for a few weeks about heaven and resurrection and some good news, eternity kind of stuff. And I want to show you a video, just a couple of minutes, and then we'll be back to read some scriptures. So there was a movie um, some years ago called Heaven is for Real. We're not talking about that, but we're sort of borrowing the title because we're taking a look at heaven for a few weeks and everything that's involved in that. And we'll talk about um, hell also and what the Bible says about that. Both are real and literal places. But I wanted to point out some things that sometimes as believers we either don't know or did not know or haven't really taken the time to stop and think about it. And the one thing, the one thing we are striving to do, what we are all about here in Mantino, is leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you talk to someone about this church family and you're trying to describe this church or someone says, hey, tell me about First Baptist Mantino. Well, here it is. All we got, one sentence, leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And that affects lots of areas. That's not just spiritually and eternal life and knowing Christ as Savior and the truth of Scripture, but it's doing life together. It's, it's having fun together and journeying together and being there together when the difficult news and the valleys of life come along along also. It's all sorts of things. And of course, leading people, leading people to Jesus. That's what we're all about and lifting him up. But um, let's talk about heaven for just a few minutes. And let me share some of the, I had listed it on, in my notes here in a handout we had on campus at the church, but sort of the amenities of heaven. Or if you look at a new home or you're planning a new home or you purchase a new home, it has amenities. It has things that is special about that place and part of the reason you're choosing that as home. And here are some of them. One, the location of heaven. Scripture actually has some things to say about that and what that looks like. The characteristics of heaven. And I have to tell you, when I was a younger guy and even had been to college and, and an adult in my Christian life, and sometimes the thought of heaven with the foundations of fine gemstones and the streets of gold and the gates of pearl, amazing, spectacular beyond value type of stuff but for me it just I don't know that it's nice and it's amazing and I want to make sure I'm there but not exactly what I was thinking about it actually I have a quote from a guy named Dr. J. Vernon McGee and I love this quote because his heart about it was exactly where I was and he says the New Jerusalem or the heavenly city heaven it seems to be all mineral and no vegetable its appearance is as the dazzling display of a fabulous jewelry store, but there's no soft grass to sit upon, no green trees to enjoy, and no water to drink or food to eat. However, here introduced in the elements that we're going to be looking at, add a rich softness to this city, to this place, to this eternal home, a rich softness of elaborate beauty. And I love that because some of the descriptions of heaven that I had had, again, it's like a jewelry store, kind of like Dr. McGee said, but there's a lot more to it than that. There's life. 
and um, there's just a, a, a gentleness, a peace. But anyway, um, not only the characteristics of heaven, but the nature of resurrected bodies, of believers who were there and the nature of those resurrected bodies. And that heaven is a place of activity and heaven is a place of learning. I love that truth about the eternal home of the believer, that it's a place where we will learn for all of eternity, and it is a place of activity. It's not just being in a dream state or floating around in the clouds. It's a real place with real life. And so let me, um, let me read to you some scriptures, and it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, because we're going to look at the characteristics of the resurrected bodies first. That's the first amenity that we're going to take a look at. And you know what? Before I read the scriptures, I just realized something. In my notes and in my planning, I just now probably failed to mention the number one amenity or the number one thing about heaven, and that is the presence of our Savior the presence of our Lord Jesus. Actually, the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's amazing. But when I was a younger guy and was working as a bookkeeper at the college um, that we had attended and where I graduated, I was working as a bookkeeper and had occasion to see people come in sometimes and pay a bill for a student, whether it was to pay their school bill or to pay some fees they owed or to pay some of their tuition or to scholarship them or, or whatever. Someone would come in and pay that. And when it was time to tell the student that had happened, the reaction was always the same. Obviously, who wouldn't be excited when someone pays a bill for them? How cool is that when your debt has been paid? And they would always want to meet the person or give thanks or say thank you to the person that paid this debt for them. And that literally is my thought about Jesus, the one that paid the penalty, that paid the price, so that I could be in right relationship and right fellowship with God and have a place in this eternal home. And that's Jesus that paid the price. And I can't wait to meet him. And I think that's just fascinating to to meet that person, to meet the Lord himself. So let's put that as the number one amenity about heaven. But let me read to you from 1 Corinthians 15 about these resurrected bodies. And the Apostle Paul's writing, and he says, But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. Let me stop there for just a second. The Apostle Paul writing to them, and in this 1 Corinthians chapter 15 chapter, you could go back and read the rest of it because it's talking about resurrection stuff. The resurrected Lord Jesus and here the resurrected body. And he's telling them that when you plant something, you don't plant what will be. As I drive through the Midwest and I see in July or August the very mature stalks of corn and then it bears its fruit. And when that is planted, it's not like farmers took a whole stalk and stuck it in the ground so they get more corn. They just planted the seed. They just planted the corn seed in the ground and then it sprouts up and then it grows to a healthy and mature plant. And really, that's a picture, again, what we're trying to do here in Mantino, is that we have people in different journeys of their spiritual life. We have some that are new seedlings. They've just been planted. The truth has come. They've trusted in Christ. And just a little bit through the dirt, you see the, you see the growth pushing up through the soil. It's, it's taken root. And then you have some that it's a tender shoot. It's a plant like the corn that maybe it's only knee high right now, but it's growing and it's getting nourishment. And then you have others that are like a mature stalk and have been Christ following for decades. And that's really fun to see and it's fun to watch in the fields around us. And the Apostle Paul is equating that to even the body of the believer. That one day, at one point in life, this body is finished. The journey, this life's journey has completed. I think of my grandma Peterman, precious woman. And when I officiated her funeral there in Cobden, Illinois, and there at the graveside service, and it's her body that we laid to rest, but her soul, her spirit, she's in the presence of the Lord as a follower of Christ. But anyway, he says that we plant seed and you get a different body that's grown out. 
and he goes on to tell them, but God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another. Birds, another, and fish, still another kind of flesh. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ from stars in splendor. Have you ever been able to look through a telescope? If not, you can Google it. But you can look at stars and see how stars have different shapes and different colors, and the splendor of stars and of the heavenly bodies are just absolutely amazing, and they differ from each other. Um, He goes on and he says, verse 42, So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So what the Apostle Paul is saying to them is for those of us who know Christ as Savior, those of us who have called on him and trusted in him and repented and turned to him, that there is a promise that one day there will be a glorified body, a resurrected body, that yes, we reach the end of this life's journey and and our body perishes, but there's a resurrection of the dead one day. And for those in Christ, other places in Scripture, it tells us that when Jesus raptures his church, that the dead in Christ will raise first. And then those who are alive and remaining will follow behind, right behind them, not far behind. But there's this resurrection that it's no longer a natural body that has its weakness and that has at times its dishonor. But it's a body that is a glorified body, again, for the followers of Christ. So what does this body look like? Real quick, let me give you some of these characteristics. It says that these bodies will be like his or like Jesus' glorified body. Remember, when Jesus died, placed in the tomb, he rose from the dead. He had his glorified body. He's still bearing his scars from his resurrection work, but he had that glorified body. And it says that ours in Philippians 3 and 1 John 3, our our body will be like his. Um, They will consist of flesh and bone. You can read about that in Luke chapter 24. It's verses 39 and 40, that the resurrected body is a real, literal body. Um, Another thing, Christ ate in his glorified body. After he had risen, he ate with the disciples. And so um, this whole wedding feast with our Lord Jesus, it's a real deal. It's a real food. There's food in heaven. Fourth thing, these bodies will not be subjected to the laws of gravity and time. Okay, we just went Star Trek on you there. But if you read about it in John chapter 20, Luke chapter 24, Jesus appeared in rooms where there were locked doors and other things with his glorified body. His glorified body was not bound by the limitations of gravity and and natural law like we have now. Fifth thing, they will be recognizable bodies. And I love this part. I think one of the really neat things about heaven, about the eternal home of the believer, of the Christ follower, is that there's no strangers in heaven. We'll know who is who. And that's just such a fascinating thing. You see that in Matthew 8 and Luke 16, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm thinking about Matthew 17, the, the whole transfiguration and Mount of Transfiguration, and that... Um, Peter, James, and John, and Peter even spoke up about building the, 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 the covering for the shelter for them and realized that it was Moses and Elijah that Jesus was talking to. It's like they all knew each other. Um, number six, they will be eternal bodies. When I laid my grandma Peterman to rest and officiated her graveside service, I knew that was not the end of the journey for her, that there is a resurrection one day and that It's an eternal body, a glorified body that should be resurrected with. And then the seventh thing is that these bodies are ones in which the spirit predominates or it's the strongest or the main element of it. That it's a resurrected body that is alive for all of eternity to worship our God, to learn more about him, to learn more, no doubt, about the universe Um, around us that will certainly still exist. We'll talk about that in the coming weeks, the location of heaven, 
new heaven, new earth. It's made new. It's just some really amazing stuff. And here is maybe the best part in our current day is that the invitation is there right now for you to be a part of this. Um, Our God, our Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he's inviting you to trust in Christ. He's inviting you to know the truth about this hope that we have, that we don't have to worry about the future, that we don't have to um, pay the price ourselves because Jesus has done it. So he's inviting you to trust in him as Savior, to turn to him today. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for the truth of eternity for the believer, for the follower of Christ. And Lord, I pray that if anyone is connecting with this and they don't know you as Savior, that they would just simply confess, Lord God, I have sinned and I ask you to forgive me of that sin. And I ask Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are, Jesus. I'm asking you to be my Savior. I pray that people would would do that with their heart, that they would turn to you. Lord God, I pray that First Baptist Mantino is here and has resources to help people grow and lead people into that growing relationship with you, Jesus. We love you this day. We worship you. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. It's a lot of information about this eternal heavenly home. More to come. If we can help you in some way, please call us at the church, email us, check us out at fbcmantino.com. We love you. We're rooting for you. And more importantly, so is our God.